Hey, what's up guys? Dustin here with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'll be showing you how to replace a clutch cable on a dirt bike. All right, so today we're gonna show you how to replace the clutch cable on a 2004 YZ252 stroke. Now over time and use, your clutch cable will begin to wear, especially if it hasn't been maintenanced regularly. Now inside of the clutch cable, there's some sheathing in there that restricts the amount of friction that the cable will experience. Now after this has wore out, especially if the cable hasn't been maintenanced regularly, the cable will begin to experience more friction, in turn making it more difficult to operate the clutch lever. Also, after you've made an adjustment up here at the perch to adjust your clutch cable's free play, if it's not set in the correct position, there are some sharp edges that are up here that your cable can be exposed to. If that's the case, your clutch cable will begin to fray. Now, replacing the clutch cable is an easy task, but one that you can get very wrong, especially when it comes to the cable's routing. So today, we're gonna to show you how to replace the clutch cable, how to adjust it, and also a few things to watch out for when doing so. Now here you can see that we've got a few different options for clutch cables. We've got OEM to aftermarket, and you can find these on our website at RockyMountainATVMC.com. To replace the clutch cable on your dirt bike, you're just gonna need a few tools. You will need some cable lube, and this cool little guy right here, this is the Tusk Cable Luber. This is gonna help us lube the cable, and we'll show you how to use that here shortly. So let's get this clutch cable replaced. Now to begin, the first thing you want to do is gain access to the routing of the clutch cable. So for this bike, we're gonna remove the seat and then we can remove the gas tank. Next, we can remove the clutch cable from the lever and perch. Now to do that, you'll bottom out the adjuster screw so that it's all the way into the perch. And to remove the cable, you want to line up the opening on the adjuster screw in the lock nut. Pull on the cable towards the handlebars, pull it through the opening and out of the clutch lever. Next, we can remove the clutch cable at the engine. Now on this bike, the clutch cable runs down into the engine case on the stator side of the motor. Now to remove this one, we'll need to pull the stator cover, then release the cable from the lever. Then we can pull the clutch cable up through the engine's case. Now your bike may be different. The clutch cable at the engine side may connect to a clutch cable stay bracket. If this is the case, Crack free the lock nut, pull the end of the clutch cable free from the clutch cable stay bracket, then release it from the lever. Next, we can remove the clutch cable from the bike. Take note of your clutch cable's routing. If you're not sure as to how the clutch cable should be routed, be sure to reference your service manual for that specific information. Next, we can install the new clutch cable following the path that the old cable was removed from. For this bike, we'll be installing the Tusk clutch cable. Now, before we connect the ends of our cables, we need to lube it. To do that, we're gonna use our Tusk cable luber tool. So we'll pull out the excess slack in the clutch cable, and then we can install our tool onto the clutch cable itself. Now, a few things to note about the tool here is we have a larger opening, a smaller opening, and an orifice that will allow for us to deliver or apply some cable lube. Now, to install this, we're gonna take the small end, we're gonna set it onto the clutch cable like this, Slide it up, we can seat the bottom, set it onto the larger part of the cable, and once that's set in that position, we can then close the tool. We'll seat it nice and tightly, and then we can take our lube, deliver a few quick sprays into this hole, work the cable several times, and we'll do this process several times until we have the clutch cable lube coming out the bottom of our cable. Next, we can reinstall the clutch cable on the engine side. We'll take and place the cable down through the engine case, like so. Then we can take the end of our cable, we'll set it into the lever arm, just like that. Then make sure to secure it in place by bending this tab back over. Reinstall the stator cover. Next, we can install the clutch cable at the perch. Now, if you don't have enough room to slide the cable 
over the adjuster and into its seat, you'll have to make an adjustment down at the engine's case. To create more slack in the clutch cable, loosen the lock nut and close this distance. So now that we've closed this distance, we've shortened the length of the cable's sheathing. So now we should have a lot more clutch cable to work with. So now we can go back up to the perch and get the clutch cable installed. Back up here at the perch, we can pull on the cable. As you can see, we now have enough clearance so that we can get this seated securely. Now once we have this set inside of the perch, we need to go back down to the engine case and take as much slack out as we can. Now as you're taking the slack out of this part of the clutch cable, keep in mind that you only have so much threads. So we're gonna stop unthreading this or taking out the slack so that we have about a quarter to three eighths of an inch of threads inside of our adjuster. Then we can set our lock nut. Now as you can see up here at the clutch perch, we still have quite a bit of clutch free play. So you will make your major adjustment down at the engine case and then up here at this adjuster, at the perch adjuster, we'll make our fine tuning adjustments. Now for this particular bike, we want to have about 5 to 10 millimeters of free play in the clutch lever. So what that means is we need to be able to move the clutch about five to 10 millimeters before it starts to engage the clutch. Now you'll take this measurement out here at the end of the clutch's lever. Now something to watch out for on these clutch perch adjusters are the sharp edges. Now this style of adjuster is slightly different from a lot of other models that are out there. Now if you have one of the clutch perch adjusters where you have a lock nut and this part of the adjuster makes the adjustment, you will want to make sure that this open edge right here is facing the front of the bike and that the open edge on the lock nut is facing towards the rider. Now if you're beginning to run out of adjustment in your clutch cable or the clutch lever itself is becoming difficult to operate, there may be some other components in the clutch assembly that have worn out and will need to be inspected. So be sure to check out some of our other videos like our clutch arm and push rod replacement how-to as well as our top five motorcycle and ATV clutch maintenance tips. Next, you'll want to make sure that you have clutch free play and smooth operation when your bars are fully turned to the left and to the right. And lastly, you'll want to double check your clutch cable's routing to ensure that it is routed correctly. If you have any question or doubt as to if this is routed properly, be sure to check your service manual and reference that specific information. Now, if you have any questions or concerns as to what we've done here today, feel free to leave a comment below and we'll be sure to get an answer back to you. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more product spotlights, tests, and how-tos. All right, guys, that's it for me. I'm Dustin with Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Thanks for watching, and keep turning those wrenches.